Hello, my name is Ken Kogan with KedTech Seminars and TheBIMGuys.com. You can check us out online at, well, TheBIMGuys.com. So let's take a look at our tip of the day here. Sometimes when you have a section cut like so, the text that's in the section sometimes gets too large and bleeds out. So how can we adjust this so it reads better uh, quickly? So we're going to take a look at just a quick tip here. I'm going to go over to the sheet. And you'll see on the sheet here it says A. 4.1 but let's say we had to change it to some larger number let's say uh, 401.1 or point a so at that point uh, what we have is a very large piece of text um, and then we'll go back to our first floor when we go back to the first floor you'll see how it's bleeding out now in this instance what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about adding a whiteout that's going to be probably the easiest way to fix this and instead of us going and manipulating the circle etc so let's take a look at the trick here now, if I pick on my section, you'll notice that I can't hit Edit Type. That's not available. Uh, this is 2022, so 2022 and back, um, not available. We're going to go over here and hit Edit Type. Now, when we hit Edit Type, you'll notice that Revit is saying, hey, this is where I'm calling those graphics. There's the callout head, and if we're doing a callout, and here's the section or head or tag. Now, the thing about this is you'll see it says Open Section Head and then Tail. So you're wondering, wait a second. What is that all about? I'm going to hit this little three dot here, and it gets interesting. It's going to expand out. I want you to notice that there's a new dialog box. So what we do is we actually have a section tag that encompasses the actual head and tail, and that's what goes here. So it's kind of a subset, okay? But now notice what we can see. We can actually see what head it's using. And you see here we have this head, HS, section head, and we're going to go ahead and utilize that this name here to find it. Uh, sometimes if it's hard to find names, you can actually highlight this, control C it, and then I'm going to go back, I'm going to close out of this and go take a look in our families. So I'm going to scroll on down here, and as we go through the project, we'll get to families. I can select families, I can then right click and hit search. I can then paste that in here, and sometimes you're working on large projects. So uh, at this point, we're going to go try to find it. Now, the name that we pasted in here may be too long because it also contains the sub or, or the type. So I'm going to hit next. Well, you see how it jumps down and it actually found it for us. So that's an easy way to find things in large projects, including families, uh, just about anything. Now, what I'm going to do is if I roll this out, you see there is the other part of it that was in the name past the colon. I'm going to grab this, right click, and I'm going to hit edit. And this brings us to the editor. <clears throat> Once we're in the editor here, you'll see there's the head. Now, we could do a couple of things. Uh, you may say, well, let's take the tail off. But what happens if we flip it the other direction? Uh, this is still at the bottom, so what's going to happen is it may crash through the head. So two fixes, really. Uh, number one, uh, you could do a little bit of the adjustment of the movement of the location. You could also adjust the size by going up here and hitting Edit Type, and we'll do that. We'll make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to duplicate the sizes being used here, and you'll see it says this is currently 332nd label. Now, I could go down a little bit further and maybe do 560 forts, and an easy way to do that is if you take both the numbers and double it, that would be 664, right? Uh, then minus one of them. So that gives us 564. It's just an easy um, little trick if you're trying to figure out what is the next one kind of in line. Uh, it would be 564. That would be smaller than uh, 664, right? So let's go ahead and hit OK on that. Um, we're also going to take this number here, and we want to add it not just to the name. I'm going to copy it because, well, my typing uh, pretty much sucks. So I'm going to come over here and then hit uh, text size. I'll click in here and I'll paste it. Okay, so we have a name here, and then what we have here is the actual, uh, the physical size. The other thing you can do is compress the number a little bit. I'm gonna put 0.9 in here. That's gonna compress it a little bit in the, if you use an axis, in the x axis. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply on that. Um, and it thought that would update, but it didn't. Let's just go ahead and hit OK. So you see how it got smaller. Uh, and not too, too small. And by lifting it a little bit, it gives it a little bit more breathing room here. Uh, we're going to go back, load it into the project, and check it out. Um, in some instances, I would go ahead and rename this, give it a new name, and give it a new, uh, and then load it back in and replace it with the one that's there. So actually, we may do that. Let's go up top, hit File, Save As. Family. And then it's going to ask for a name, right? I'm going to put open head small. So in this instance, what it's going to do is just, I'll have two heads that I can use. Now, I'll put it in the location where you can find it in the future. Um, as you can see, it's just dumping into my pictures area. I'm going to put it on the desktop just for ease right now. But put this in a location where you can find it in the future. Hit save.
All right, so now we've created the new head. We're going to load it back into the project. If you have multiple projects open, choose the project and hit OK. Now it's going to load back in and you're not going to see any changes. <clears throat> Let's go back to the first floor plan. So here we are in the first floor plan. You notice that um, as before, it was big and it crashed through the model here or crashed through the, the symbol. I'm going to go ahead and make another section here. I'm going to copy it. You can copy a section. You may not have any need for this, just for speed on my part. I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. Uh, now we do have another section. It's actually available over here, and you can sheet it up. Uh, so I just put it out the way so we have two sections now. If I go ahead and sheet that one up, it would also show the number. Actually, I have one over here that is sheeted and numbered, so we'll drag it over here again. I'm not so worried about what's showing on the sheet. My main objective here is to show you the different head and head styles. I'm going to delete the original section that I just copied. All right, moving back on over. Let's take a look at what we have. If I grab this section, I'm grabbing on the section line itself. It says that is a wall section. When I grab on this one, you'll notice that it says it is a wall section. If I drop this down, you can have different sections. And what it's going to do, you can set up different parameters. And also, if I hit Edit Type, let me go ahead and select it again. When I hit Edit Type, what you're going to see is, uh, notice we have the type wall section uh, or building section can use different heads or different information and different view templates to set up. So besides just changing the graphics, you can also run a view template, which is quite nice. So what we're going to do is we've got the wall section here that we've been using. So I'm going to call it a new one called wall section small. Again, I'm not a big fan of just overriding things unless that's you know been determined we want to do that. If I'm working on a project with other people I want, and I need something special, I may duplicate it. Now in this instance, we want to keep them all consistent through the project. So I might overwrite it. but trying to stick with the let's not destroy everything in the project when we're editing things unless we want to we're going to duplicate it we'll duplicate this we'll give it called wall section small and again your terminology may be different from mine I hit OK on that now it's going to get interesting because remember we didn't change this uh, family we actually changed the head family so we're going to do something here we're going to click here and you'll notice that it opens up another box okay so now our wall section head our wall section small, excuse me, is going to use a different head. Section head open, section tail filled. Now, I know this sounds crazy, but we have to duplicate this also. So I'm going to say uh, section head small open like so. Now, I've duplicated that just like we've duplicated everything else. Then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to take the head and I'm going to drop the head down and we should have our small head in here. So we come down and we look for the small head, which is located right here. So I know it took a couple of steps to happen, but I wanted to show you that how it happens and how you do it. Now, as far as me leaving the number two behind it, those are just minor details. I don't want to spend uh, hours on the video. And now notice how it actually fits in the box. So we have two types here. I can choose this. You'll notice it is that is a wall section. And then maybe I'm on a specialized project and I'm like, oh man, you know what? I need the new the, the new feature or the small one. I can choose it. So this could be in your template. And depending on the project that you're working on, you could change them. Now, one of the nice things is once you've got them set up, you could actually grab these. I'm going to go ahead and change them back. I'm going to hold the control key down. You can change multiple at one time, which is nice. So I'll go over here, back to wall section. Or you can grab one, right click, select all instances in the entire project. OK, so it's going to grab all the wall sections. And it might grab 15 or 20 of them. Now I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to change it. Now, it did say multiple families selected, so I might be suspect before we do that. Let's go ahead and check that out, make sure we don't get anybody in trouble. Okay, so that is a building section. This is a wall section. I'm going to right click, duplicate, or excuse me, select all instances in the entire project. Okay, so it only gr grabbed those two, which are the wall sections. And I'm going to come down here and say, okay, let's go ahead and change it to the small wall section. And it should change it out. I didn't want you to go ahead and mess something up, but notice we have the original uh, and the new. So that is a way to get those um, set up. Another way you can uh, adjust this, what if the text goes even further? Uh, I'm going to drill down a little bit and we'll take a look at that family again. I'm going to go to the sheet. I'm going to make the sheet number even larger. So let's say we have something else in here, let's say a building number. So this is uh, building number 12. Then, we'll try that and cap locks it, building 12 hyphen. A, so now we've got a number that's massive. So if we go back to our viewer just in, you notice that it, it goes outside the box. And if I was to flip this, really no matter what we do, it is in that arrow. Okay, so we have an issue here. Another option would be is to go back to that family 
and if you remember how to get back to it we could scroll down here remember that was section head now we have a section head small that we're working on so I'm gonna go ahead and right click and hit edit the family it's already open but uh, it's gonna come on up now one of the things we can do with this text is I grab the text I can hit edit type when I hit edit type you'll notice that it says transparent uh, most of the time people like using transparent so things do not get hidden under tags and get missed in a project uh, but in this instance you may say okay I'm gonna change this thing to, to opaque what opaque is going to do it's gonna give us the ability to uh, kind of overwrite what's there also I may compress it even more I'm gonna say 0.85 um, at one point you might get too tight and it may be hard to read but I want to change those so it makes it uh, makes it cleaner now this time I'm not gonna um, save as something different I'm going to go here and I'd say file save so I would actually save the family so I don't lose it in the future and I'm going to load it into the project now this is going to be a direct swap because when I load into the project the actual tag I'm loading is already in the project so Revit's going to ask me do you want to overwrite the existing version and I hit yes so what it's going to do is going to overwrite it now notice it overwrote it we compressed the text a little bit reads a little bit better and we've added that whiteout if you come from AutoCAD or that um, opaque background so it reads better so even though it's not as beautiful as some of the others what it does it gives you the ability to uh, to read better here's one it hasn't been manipulated notice it's a lot wider um, it also is larger and if I hit the flip here you can see how it's I can't even read some of those numbers it's getting hard for me to read so those are some tips and tricks to um, hopefully make your sections read a little bit better if you enjoyed the video check us out on the web at the bim the the bim building information modeling guys.com thank you